Hi, and welcome to the next video in the Countess Shogun rigging series. Today, we will be rigging the thigh armor using some fake collisions. When I say fake, I mean it looks like collision, but it really isn't. You will see what I mean as we go. So let's start. First, I will move the hand out of the way so we can better see what we are doing. Then I will enable the bone layers that contain the temp and deformation bones. Then I will select all of these thigh flap, temp and deformation bones and move them to an empty bone layer. Next, enable the bone layer that contains the leg rig that we made in the previous tutorials. Snap the cursor to somewhere around here on the leg and shift A to add a new bone. Select this new bone and move it a bit lower. And you can make it a bit bigger so it's easier to select. Then rename it to MCH Thigh Armor Collider underscore L. Parent this new bone to the pelvis control. Now select it again and duplicate it. Then scale it a bit so they are not exactly the same. And rename this duplicate to MCH Thigh Armor Collider Target underscore L. And then parent it to MCH Thigh Twist 01 Driver underscore L. Now, if we test in pose mode, the first bone we created should only move with the pelvis and the second one with the leg. We can now make the fake collision using a limit distance constraint. So first select the collider target, shift select the collider and then using Ctrl Shift C add a limit distance constraint. Go to the constraint settings, make sure the clamp region is set to inside and then set the distance to something like 4 cm. And now if we go to pose mode and test again, you will see that after a distance of 4 cm is reached between the two bones, the collider target will be dragging the collider bone. Next, we need a way to convert this motion into rotation. And for that, we will need one new bone. So snap the cursor to the start of the leg and add a new bone. Then snap the tail of this bone to the collider bone. Then select this new bone, then the first thigh flap temp bone and using shift N copy its orientation to the new bone. Now select the collider bone, shift select this new bone and add a damped track constraint. We now have a rotation motion that we can copy onto the thigh flap bones. So select the bone that has the damped track constraint, then the first thigh flap temp bone and add a copy rotation constraint. Go to the constraint settings, change the spaces to local space and mix to before original. Then select the other two tie flap temp bones. Then as the last one the first tie flap temp bone and using Ctrl C copy bone constraints. You can do a quick test just to see if they are rotating in the correct direction. As the next step let's rename these temp bones. The first one should be called hip flap one shogun control underscore L, then copy and paste that name onto the other ones and just change the number. Next, let's attach the deformation bones to these controls. Start by selecting all three of them, duplicate them, scale them a bit down and make them a bit thicker and then rename them. The first one is buff hip flap zero one shogun L. You can copy that name, paste it on the other ones and again just change the number. As the next step, parent the buffer to the respective controls. As usual, first select the buffer, shift select the control, then control P and keep offset. And repeat the same for the other two pairs. Before I forget, I will also parent the last bone I created to the pelvis control. And to know what it is, I will give it a proper name. Let's call it MCH Thigh Armor Collider Rot underscore L. Okay, back to our deformation bones. Let's constrain each of them to their buffers using a copy transforms constraint. And with that done, we have actually finished the rig, but we have to go back and tweak some values until the collision looks perfect. Let's start with the copy rotation constraints. As you can see, the thigh flat bones are rotating a bit too much. So let's lower the influence on the copy rotation constraints. These are the numbers that work well for my rig and you can play around with your setup until you have something that looks good. Next, we need to move the collider target a bit so that the collision starts at the correct spot. From this side, you can really see that it's not ideal. But if I go to the edit mode and move the collider target a bit forward, the behavior will look a bit more realistic.
we can then rotate the camera to the front and fix it from that view as well. Here the rotation starts a bit too soon and we can fix that by taking the collider target and moving it a bit to the left. And that looks pretty much perfect to me. And I went ahead, did a bit of cleanup, added some custom shapes to these bones and this is pretty much the wrap for this rig. It is of course not as good as real collision, but it gets the job done and I can keep this tutorial relatively simple. And lastly, if you learned something from these videos and would like to see me make more, consider subscribing and maybe supporting me on one of the platforms listed below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.